How's it going guys? Today, Carly and I are bringing you <laughs> another video. This is a question that's called container with most water. This is a question that's asked by Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Goldman Sachs, Adobe, Airbnb, Facebook, and Alibaba. So this is a really good one to know. The problem description says given n non-negative integers a1 to an where each represents a point at coordinate a i a i uh, n vertical lines are drawn such that the two endpoints of the line i is at i comma a i and j i comma zero. Find two lines together with x with the x axis forms a container such that the container contains the most water. Sorry <laughs> for totally butchering that problem statement. Uh, it says you may not slant the container and n is at least two. So this is a really weird convoluted way. Uh, to basically just say find the bounds that would contain the most water, basically like the most area. So we have a bunch of vertical lines, and we just want to find which lines will give us the max area, essentially. And because it's a container of water, specifically if we have lines that are different size, it's limited to the smaller one. So if things are different sizes, uh, the limiting factor is a smaller vertical line. Cool. So one way to do this would be to, for every line, compare every other line. So we would basically have a pointer that starts, so we'd have two nested loops and we would have uh, i start at zero, let's say, and then j go to the end, and then i would increment, and j would again be i plus one and go to the end, and you'd kind of just take the difference of uh, sorry, we would just continually uh, update a maximum variable and whatever the maximum was after we did all of those different comparisons would be our maximum area. So I'm going to try something a little bit different in this video. Let's start out with that. So this is an n squared solution. So let's kind of walk through how this would work. So we'd have something called max. We'd send it to integer.min value just to start so that the first time we find a max, it'll update accordingly. And now we'll have our nested for loop. So for in i zero, well, actually we have to start at one because they told us that, actually no, we could do it this way. i zero, i is less than height dot length, i plus plus. And now we'll have our inner loop. So we'll have for in j equals one, well, or actually i plus one. Well, j is less than height dot length, j plus plus. And now what we want to do is we want to find the minimum uh, height, right? So if these are our two lines, if we had a container of water that went up to here, it would just flow out, right? So this is our restriction here. So we want to find the minimum between the two. So we'll have a variable called min, and this will be equal to math.min of height i and height j. So this way we are only dealing with the maximum constraint, which is a smaller thing. And now we just need to calculate the area, right? So we could say max is going to be math.max of whatever the max currently is, or our new max that we're potentially calculating, or uh, our new potential max here. So now you would calculate the difference in, or sorry, actually calculate the area. So you would say this would be min times, and then however far away we are based on the index. So we would say j minus i. And I think that should just about do it for the n squared solution. So again, we're starting at the very first vertical line and then comparing it to every other one and calculating the distance. So we're comparing these two lines, taking the minimum of their heights, calculating the distance uh, and updating the max variable as according to that, and then we're doing it for every other line, and then i gets incremented to the next line, we do the same thing, and by the end of this, we should have our max. So we return max, if I can type. Cool, so that works. So something even better that we could actually do is we could do this in one pass. So what we can do now is because we know that we're only interested in the line that uh, is larger, like we really only want to have to deal with this line, um, although this is our limiting factor. So because this is our limiting factor, we're going to try and change that. We're going to try and move it. So what we could really do is we could have a pointer that starts at the left and a pointer that starts at the right. We can calculate, um, again, like our, our minimum constraint between the two. 
and then we can calculate the area, and then um, we would just move the smaller of those two pointers. And so eventually we'll be at some place where they will meet, that's when our loop will end, and by then we will have correctly populated our max variable. So let's try to do it that way now. So again, we'll have int max equals integer dot min value, just to make sure, again, we started at minimum value so that when we find a maximum, it'll always get uh, incremented or, sorry, uh, reassigned the first time. Now we'll have our two pointers, so we'll say i is zero to start at the left side, and now we'll have integer I, uh, j equal height dot length minus one. So we're starting at the last uh, height in our heights array. And now we'll say while they haven't crossed, so while i is less than j, we're gonna calculate our minimum again. So int min is equal to math.min of height i and height j. And now we wanna update our max if we have one. So we'll say max equals math.max, sorry, math.max of max. And again, it'll be our uh, minimum, which is our constraint times and it'll be j minus i, because j is the right pointer, i is the left pointer, so that will give us our positive value. And now all we have to do is check, based on these two pointers, whichever is smaller, that's the one we want to move towards the center, or increment, or decrement, I guess j could be decremented, decremented because it's uh, starting on the right. So i will move forward, j will move backwards. So now if, and we can say, uh, so you're right, if, height of i is less than height of j, now we want to move i up, because that's our limiting factor. So we want to keep the tallest vertical line as, uh, that we can, and then move the one that's constraining us, right? So in this case, it would be like this, this j pointer is higher or taller, so we'd want to move the i to hopefully find a taller i. So we would say i plus plus, and if this isn't the case, we're just gonna say else, and we will move j. So in the case where j is smaller, this might be backwards for you guys. We'll move J down. Uh, cool, and I think that should just about do it. So let's try now returning our max. So once they've met in the middle, we've actually found our maximum. So let's resubmit this. Awesome, and that also works. And this is O of N because we're only doing one pass. Cool, so that's how to solve container with most water in Java. This is a question that's asked by a lot of companies right now. So make sure you guys understand this. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments. If you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe or release a video every day so you guys can kind of see a new tech interview. Good luck on all your interviews, and I'll see you guys next time.